Namaskar. It is a privilege to have Ramendra Kumar sir in our TV studio. Ramendra sir is an award-winning children's writer with 35 books to his name. His writings have been translated into 15 Indian and 14 foreign languages. A much sought after inspirational speaker and performance storyteller. Sir is a regular at leading literature festivals, seminars and workshops. He had the privilege of chairing two sessions at the 36th IBBY Congress in Athens recently. An engineer and an MBA, Raman Sir is working as Chief of Communications, Rautla Steel Plant, Odisha. Sir, so what is your latest book all about? It appears to be a mix of suspense and sports. First of all, Shagufta, I would like to thank you for the lovely introduction. Yes, my latest book is The Siege of Cricket. And it's about four youngsters who call themselves the Fandu Four. One of them stumbles upon a murder and they set themselves on the trail of the murderer. This trail leads them to plot which involves a dashing cricket captain a media mogul, a respected commentator, a very a talented anchor and a charismatic dictator. This search or this trail leads them to an island in the Indian Ocean which is just a speck. There is a lot of action, there is a lot of intrigue, there is a lot of suspense and there's oodles of humour. Now what the book is trying to explore is, can the Fundu 4 prevent the annihilation of cricket, the murder of the spirit of cricket and keep this great game alive? Sounds very interesting and I'm sure people will also love it. What makes sports fiction so appealing to you? Your previous books have uh, covered several sports. Yeah, the first uh, book of uh, on sports which I wrote uh, some years ago was called Now or Never. It was about boxing. It talked uh, about the connect between a father and his son through the medium of boxing. It was kind of autobiographical because I have been hugely inspired by my father. And uh, in this book, the father sacrifices his professional career for his son. And in that process, he becomes an alcoholic. So when the son grows up, he gets his father back to the sport and gets him to be a champion. That was my first book. It was for youngsters in the age of, uh, say, around 10 to 14. My second book uh, devoted to sports was called The Indian Maasai. Uh, it was basically about a Maasai child who grows up in East Africa. He is adopted by an Indian family and brought to India. So how he adjusts and assimilates the Indian society, the, the Indian way of living, and how his adopted family encourages him to use his incredible talent in running, in sports, in sprint, to win uh, India its first gold medal. So this is a tale of uh, inclusiveness. This is a tale of uh, the triumph of the spirit of, uh, what should I say, sports over all possible impediments. The third book of mine uh, on sports again was about the beautiful game. You know what the beautiful game is. It's football, yeah. right? So this is about a child who's lost one arm and he wants to play football. So how he goes about, you know, playing football, how he shatters those stereotypes that a handicapped child cannot play football, how he uses his guts and gumption and uh, uh, his resilience to become a sports uh, hero is what I have mentioned in this book. It has been published by uh, Doug Bill, one of the leading publishers of the country in 2017 and I'm happy to say it's doing rather well. And this, like I've told you, is my latest book on sports. It's about cricket. Um, is this book for middle school children? Uh, yeah, kind of, yeah. Okay. So how did you get the idea for this book? No, basically I uh, got the idea uh, from the fact that I am obsessed with sports and I love cricket. In fact, I used to play uh, cricket for my school. So I was a leg spinner, you know. So the I used to uh, bowl to my teammates who were 12, 13 and uh, they were four feet nothing. Then uh, we had to play the first match I ever played in my life was against players 
who said they were below 12, but they were much above 12 and they were five feet something. So my leggies, which would come at a good length to my chums, my teammates, uh, would be much below the knees for these new guys, you know, these uh, opponents of mine. And I got thoroughly creamed in the very first over. And the first over of my life became the last over of my life because I was creamed for 18 runs. And that was the end of my cricketing career. And some somebody who could have been a very promising leg, leg bowler after Chandrasekhar and before Chahal, uh, you know, his career was ended like this. But I'm happy you didn't go that way. Then we would have missed this uh, great author that you have become now. <laughs> That's a great thing. <laughs> How much of research was involved in writing this book? Uh, it's, I, like I told you, I'm obsessed with cricket. So uh, I hardly did any research because I am fond of the game. I've played it. I've watched so much of cricket. I've heard cricket commentary when there was no television. So I really didn't have to do any re research. What is your process of writing middle grade novels? Do you outline your story chapter by chapter and write the book? Or do you write without knowing how the book ends? There is a kind of a framework in my head, you know, I don't have to put it on paper also, like uh, the broad framework of the plot of the novel and how the novel is going to flow, more or less. After the framework is set, then I start writing and the chapters of the story evolves. Once I have written the first draft, then I lock it for a few days, go back and revisit it. And after that, I don't make no changes. I send it to the publisher and depending on the publisher's uh, reaction, I might tweak it a little bit. You have a nine to five job. How long did you take to write this book? Do you write every day or write when you have time? Uh, nine to five job, yes, definitely. It's, it's, it's tough and especially because I'm in the field of uh, communications and the field of public relations. Public relations basically is uh, not a nine to five job. It's a 24 seven job. Uh, I might have taken around two to three months to write the first draft. I don't uh, write uh, in a very disciplined way, you know, like from 7.30 to 8.30 I'll write, then I'll have my dinner, then, then from 8.45 to 9.45 I'll write, then I'll uh, go for a walk and then I'll write for seven and a half minutes. No, I write when the ideas come to me, but when the ideas come to me, I write like hell. You are kind of those people who are like, uh, when idea clicks in and then you start writing yeah. and you are not a kind of mechanized person who is like achha, thinking and then writing. No, it comes naturally and then you start writing. Yeah, I think it comes naturally and then it, it's, a, it's a kind of a passion and it's a kind of a, what should I say, it, it all flows, you know. And at that point of time, I have to write. I just but can't stop writing. Because you get a lot of ideas and you're like, in the set and in the mood to write. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Can you read a passage from the book? Yeah, sure. That would be my pleasure. I'm uh, reading a, a passage which actually is the turning point as far as the book is concerned. Just then, Ram Kumar's cell phone rang. Hello, Mr. Ram Kumar, I know you're watching the cricket match. Who's speaking? First, please listen to me, sir. Vicky has deliberately lost the match. What? Yes, sir. He is guilty of match fixing. You are talking rot. He is such an accomplished player, a committed cricketer, and the captain of the team. He will never do that. I have proof, sir. Can you come to my house? Ram Kumar hesitated for a moment. Yeah, I'll be there. But it better not be a hoax. Twenty minutes later, Ram Kumar was ringing the bell of the flat. It was on the fifth floor of a 10-story building. There was no response. He rang the bell and waited and then gently pushed the door. It opened. He went in, followed by his daughter, Neha. She looked over his shoulder and screamed. A man was sitting sprawled on the sofa. He was clad in a light blue t-shirt and a pair of dark blue jeans. He seemed to be in his 30s and had a dark, round face a blob of a nose and large round eyes which were staring at them. On the pocket of his t-shirt, there was a hole from which blood was oozing. The plot seems really exciting and I'm sure the novel would be a page turner. <laughs> Are any of the characters in the book based on real people? 
Yeah, there is a character in the book uh, called Simran. She's a young lady, 22, 23 years old. So she is a person who, with no background in uh, commentating. And she just walks into the studio, gives an audition, and she gets the job. And then because of her sheer talent, her wit, and uh, her brilliance, she becomes uh, as good or as well known a name as the person she is interviewing or interacting in the studio. She has been based, her character has been based on Harsha Bhogle, who uh, was my senior in school and who everybody knows uh, without having a background uh, of the kind which people would uh, really like to include in a commentary team has uh, now become one of the most popular commentators in the world. He is called the voice of uh, cricket. And incidentally, this book has also been endorsed by him. That's really nice. And which is your favorite character from the book? Yeah, thanks for this question because uh, there's one character I really, really love. I grew up in Hyderabad. So there was this, uh, this name I have borrowed. Uh, he used to run a grocery store. His name was Shukur Mia. Yeah. So this character in the book is a thug. He's a gunda. But he's a gunda with principles. So he's, uh, his uh, business is to sell tickets in black. You know, daskabis, daskabis, daskabis and all that. In the 70s and 80s, this was very, very popular. And he has his own area marked out. So one day in that area, another uh, goon, another thug enters, whose name is Malish. So Shukurmiya goes and tells him that let's divide our areas. You know, our areas are very clearly demarcated. You operate in your area, I have no issues. And let me operate in my area. That guy doesn't listen to him and even tries to murder Shukurmiya. Then Shukurmiya gets back at him, creams him, practically decimates him, and then moves on to improve his, enhance his business. In that journey, he uh, saves a Hindu child from getting killed and brings him up as a Hindu child, you know, without trying to change his religion or yes. customs or systems or whatever. After adopting the Hindu child, he's so much influenced by the child's uh, story. His parents are killed in, his, in a riot, Hindu-Muslim riot. Shukurmiya's own son and uh, wife are killed in a riot. He gives up all his, uh, these kind of jobs, illegal jobs, and becomes an expert in information. He just networks and trades information and becomes a messiah of the marginalized. So I have loved creating this character. And if there is ever a sequel to The Siege of Cricket, Siege of Cricket 2.0, then definitely Shukurmiya would be a part of that. Yes, um, <clears throat> your character is very, very interesting, I must say. And uh, I'm looking forward to complete this book. Where can the viewers buy your book? The viewers can get this book on <clears throat> Amazon. Uh, they can also buy it directly from the publisher. And the publisher is a very popular uh, young uh, person in the field. And the publishing house is called Readomania. Okay. Yes, that's very nice because most of the time, uh, people or kids, they love to read new stuff, especially when books are based on uh, any sports or something like that. But uh, most of the time, they don't get it online. But I'm happy that Amazon is uh, having your book and uh, anyone can buy it from Amazon. What can kids expect from your book? Uh, the kids can expect uh, the essence of sports from my book. Why do I write sports fiction so much? Because I think uh, sport is a paradigm for life. Like there are ups and downs, like life is a roller coaster. Sports is also has its, uh, has its crests and troughs. Sport is not, uh, through the medium of sport, I reach out to my readers and talk about values, about honesty, camaraderie, teamwork, resilience, and uh, the ability to, you know, triumph over all odds, to convert every uh, challenge into an opportunity. And uh, the second thing about the book is that I've tried to make it as uh, fast-paced as possible. It 
I, ha- I hope you will find the readers would find this book like uh, you know the like Harsha has said as exciting as a T20 thriller. They would find the characters interesting because they are in the here and now. They are not once upon a time. They are the characters like Shagufta or Shirin or Vijay or Ajay. People around us, you know, not big big celebrities and all that. And uh, also through this book. I am trying to communicate that cricket or any sport is above everything. It is above any kind of uh, corruption, uh, it is above any kind of uh, uh, skullduggery and uh, each one of us should uh, try to imbibe this spirit of sport in our lives to become more empathetic to have greater synergy with the society and to become more human and humane beings. I have noticed one thing is that the characters of your book are quite relatable. As the current generation loves reading sports and our generation is, lo- is in love with sports. So I hope that uh, people and our viewers who are watching this will love your book and uh, will uh, pass on the message to everybody that the book is very good, you should read So thank you for sharing your book and your knowledge with us. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you.